Felix has one key piece of safety equipment that he has to learn to trust. His pressurized spacesuit. Joe takes him to be fitted at the same company that made his spacesuit 50 years ago. Of art. It's all hand done. She just assembled these two pieces. Mm -hmm. You cannot see where she just sewed that together. It's impossible. I think it's right there. Where? No, I don't Because <laughs> <laughs> I can't find it either. <laughs> it will take a team of people more than a year to build the customized suit. A single flaw could be deadly. You have to be very exact <laughs> about everything. If you did do something wrong, it could be someone's life, you know, so. But they check us much too much. <laughs> Space suits are designed for protection, not for free falling. This is a whole new world for Felix. Ready to do this? Okay, screw it in. Clockwise, threw it in. Run it up to three PSI. Well, I'll have a pound of other The suit is inflated with air, creating a protective cocoon around the body. Okay, can I jump? This pressurized air keeps you alive at altitude, but makes movement difficult. Okay, three, two, one. Get full, full flex and get all the way back. Good. Do that again. It's hard to describe how it feels. Your movements are totally limited. Is that hard? Is that okay? Is that hard? You can't breathe that easy anymore. It's difficult, you know. You don't feel a damn thing in that suit. Felix's training in the pressure suit begins at a facility used by the military mm -hmm. to simulate conditions at the edge of space. Overseeing the test is Joe's colleague, Mike Todd. Bring it open. It's really a training exercise for Felix. He has a limited suit experience, and the more experience we can get him in the suit, uh, the more confident that he's going to be at altitudes. Sir, whenever you're ready, go ahead and reach up to the top and bring your visor down slowly. 1118. The suit's flexibility is still causing Felix concern. Now we'll find out what it's like working in it for several hours. I've seen people struggle with pressure suits. You're in your own little environment. It's a, it's a little plastic bubble that you're in. And uh, you've always got something touching your skin someplace, which reminds you that you are. Felix is depressurized to 76,000 feet, way beyond the Armstrong line. It's getting hot in here, Tom. It's getting hot in here. The water bubbling is what would happen to his blood without protection. The higher you go, the more the suit inflates. So it's getting harder to move. Plus, your neck ring is lifting your head. This thing looks good. How you doing? 
do it. She's dead cool. It really hurts my stomach. Yes. Got stomach pain now. It's getting hot and cold inside your body. You can feel how you start sweating. Your respiration rate has definitely changed. You feel claustrophobic, you know? I was really close to, to tell the guys, hey, get me out of the suit, I can't deal with that anymore. I was really fighting against it, you know? Fighting against my, my own fear, fighting against my own mind. Everybody's counting on you, everything's really cool, guy, you can deal with it. And I mean, I have to accomplish a jump from 130,000 feet, breaking the speed of sound. And I can't even stand being in the suit on the ground. Good. All right, let's go. The scientists want to analyze the aerodynamics of Felix in flight. It's the kind of low altitude jump that Felix is used to. But wearing the suit, even unpressurized, makes it a challenge. like watching a hawk in flight. I deal with aircraft and we make machines to do certain flight dynamics. In this case, the machine is Felix. At this altitude, Felix falls at around 100 miles an hour. Jumping from 24 miles up, he'll be in a near vacuum. A lack of resistance means he'll just keep accelerating. Faster than a jumbo jet after 25 seconds. Moments later, faster than a .45 caliber bullet. And after 35 seconds, he'll exceed 700 miles an hour. As he passes through the sound barrier, the team want Felix to be in the delta position, tracking head down. They think this will be the safest position to go supersonic. But it's a theory that has never been tested. We're putting Felix into a condition that really has never been done and has never been documented for sure. So we don't know what happens to the body at the speed of sound. What they do know is when an object like a plane goes supersonic, it is catching up with and pushing through its own sound waves. In early jets, this caused extreme vibration. No one knows what it will do to Felix. As he pushes closer to the sound barrier, he may potentially have parts of his body that are supersonic, while other parts of his body are not. You end up with a vibration that could cause physical problems, because your body is very susceptible to vibration or wave patterns. If you get the wrong pattern, you can cause internal damage to organs. We've created computer models, trying to see what we think is gonna happen. But after doing all the math, it's still a guess. The test jumps help Felix feel safer in the suit. As Felix rises above 80,000 feet, the team need to reassure him that the visor will work when he jumps. If he didn't have faceplate heating, he'd be fogged up completely. Okay, Felix, uh, this is what we think we should do. He has to unplug his visor from the capsule power, allowing it to be powered by the pack on his chest. 
but that could cut his communication to mission control and he may never get it back. Are you going to go for an umbilical disconnect? I'm going to stand by and reinforce. Yeah, he's going to the bathroom. It's a good time to do it. Felix has now risen past Joe's altitude of 102,000 feet. But he faces a serious dilemma. If he carries on, he may have no sight and no contact with his team. Abort and he may never get another chance. He needs to hurry up and find out if it's going to work or not, so we know if we're pressing on to 128. Felix, are you good there? Felix decides to risk it. Okay, you understand the procedures. If you thumbs up, we keep going. Thumbs down, we cut you loose. Yes, I understand that, sir. Ready? Roger. Go ahead, Felix. And good luck and God bless you. Can you hear me, Felix? I hear you loud and clear, Colonel. Felix, I'm reading you loud and clear, too. We have good communications right now, but... Plugged into the chest pack, he still has communication. Hold your breath and let's see if we get the, the condensation again, Felix. Hold your breath, let's see if we get condensation. Hey, Felix, it, it appears if it's, as if it's dissipating while you've got your breath held. Is that what you're seeing? It looks like, yeah. Well, I think that means that it's working. How you doing, Felix? Hanging in there, buddy? Okay, I think we should continue and hopefully our chest pack face field heating is working at uh, Mike, let everybody know. Felix is going to jump. The world is allowed to watch once more. Is he, what is he doing? He's, he's spinning, isn't he? Felix has just gone supersonic, but he's lost control.
One minute and 30 seconds, and stable as a rock. Felix, you calling me? Uh, keep talking, Felix, keep talking. Three minutes free fall, three minutes free fall. Okay, I have been on speed for a long time. Sounds like I had to pass out. The laser is smoking out. I repeat, the laser is smoking out. Felix, you're at the coldest altitude. The further you fall, the warmer it's going to get. That was really tough. Felix, you're, we're so proud of you. You did absolutely fabulous, absolutely fabulous. I couldn't have done any better myself.